everyone! I am Jessa Hao, a Creative Associate at Creative Nation Academy. And today, we will be continuing our writing for new media lesson. If you haven't watched our previous episodes, kindly check out our channel. Also, the link will be provided on the description below so you guys can check it out. Alright! As we've done this cast new media context and its platforms, we will now move on to the most, I must say, the highlight of this series, new media writing. When we say new media writing, we talk about contents produced through the internet. And we consumers have the opportunity to be a producer of our own contents. However, before publishing a content, we should make sure it is effective in catching the eyes of our audiences. How? That is what we will be discussing for today. But before we get really into the lesson, you know the drill. If you watch the last two episodes, you are immune to this ritual. But this is a reminder to be a sponge and absorb as much knowledge as you can. You know, at the end of the day, to everything we do, we should make sure we learn. Because things happen for a reason and that reason is for us to learn. Alright, now let's start. New media writing. How do we create effective and eye-catching content for our audiences? You know, writing for new media is highly distinct compared to writing for other media. Think of this way. Traditional media is a different world and so is new media. On Facebook alone, we get to meet people from different age groups from a variety of cultures and beliefs. And so the jigs is, making content for new media is not as easy as we might think of. Competition is high, technology is ever-changing, and so many factors to consider before publishing your first draft of writing. So, I will be giving you some steps and guides you might want to follow to improve and enhance your ways of presenting your works on the internet. Are you ready? Let's begin! Number one on the list, idea building. This comes first because it's the very first thing you do. You think of the idea, clear your mind, make things specified, and list as many details as you can. It will be easier for you to sail a ship with a map than to go with the flow of water. There are some techniques you can practice in generating ideas. First is free writing. Free writing is simply writing without minding all of the structures. You write what you think and everything that comes into your mind you take down notes. This will help you to see broader perspectives which will give you a variety of options to choose up later on. Now you can also try 5 W's and H method. The technique represents basic questions you need to ask when thinking about specific topic. Answering who, what, where, when, why, and how of your content. You don't need to answer all of them at once or immediately elaborate all of the answers. The purpose of this is to have a clear understanding of what you really want your content to be. You are building a foundation, okay? Okay, lastly, you might want to create a cluster. A cluster is a visual learner tool that is used to link details under a central idea that becomes a visual mind map for developing a content. You have this main idea lying in the middle, then creating branches that become sub-ideas then other smaller ones that become more specific details. It's like making a family of ideas which will let you see clearer the way you will be heading at. Okay, now that you have a topic to pursue and generate some ideas, the next step is to identify your audiences. If you chose the 5 W's in H method, you already figured out the general set of audiences, but you don't know them yet. Remember the reason why you are making a content in the first place is not for yourself, but for your audiences. A message or idea to convey will not be useful unless an audience is identified. Do a research on who will be your targeted people, who is well suited for the kind of content you will be producing. You can segment the market based on their demographics or an in-depth assessment which can be found via psychographics. 
If you want to learn about market segmentation, let us know in the comment section so we could take a note and it might be pursued as a new series to watch out for in the near future. Alright! Moving on, after tracking your audiences, you need to be familiarized with new media tools. When I say tools, I am talking about the platforms. As discussed in the previous episode, we get to know a little about these giant platforms. However, it is not enough. Going deeper is what we wanted to prioritize because there are ample of the best contents out there and not seen and appreciated much of what it deserves. Do you want to know why? The problem is not the content. It is on the place it was published. And this is why, again, research comes in. Which tools suited your content the most? Where do your target audiences mostly go? You will never find the answer on this. Not unless you get to familiarize yourself with new media tools and do your part to study and take the opportunity to browse millions of free resources to gain knowledge about these matters. Let yourself be a consumer first. Observe, study, and prepare so you can be an effective content creator. All right, down to the last step, effective writing. Don't be scared to write. You don't need to perfect everything. But of course, we still want to give the best of what we can and try to be as professional as we can be. So, here are the five C's of effective written communication according to yourdictionary.com. First is connection from the word itself. In writing, you need to make your readers be connected to your content. Make your writing engaging, audience-friendly, and personalized in a way they think you are directly talking to each one of them. Second, clarity. You don't need to write longer sentences. Make it simple, clear, and easy to understand. Third, cause. What is the reason why you create such content? Why you write such materials? It is important that you clear this cause to you and your audiences and then include the call to action if there's any to invite and spread your advocacy if that's the case. Okay? Next is conciseness. As I said, keep it simple. Do not go around the bush. Get straight to the point because too many words may lead to misinterpretation and we don't want that to happen. Lastly, correctness. Be vigilant, careful to words we use, to the tone. Watch for the words that may offend others and of course, appropriate grammar. Okay? There you have it, new media writing. I hope you learned from today's lesson. Oh, you might be wondering what else we should learn next because we still have one last episode you don't want to miss. I hope you will still be with me tackling the opportunity of new media writing. Stay tuned for that. Thank you everyone for watching and see you on our next episode. Continue learning, stay safe, and God bless. Adios! Mm -hmm.